however difficult this vote may be, some of us must urge the use of restraint. Our country is in a state of mourning. Some of us must say, let's step back for a moment. Let's just pause just for a minute. And think through the implications of our actions today so that this does not spiral out of control. As we act, let us not become the evil that we deplore. Thank you, and I yield the balance of my time. The King's Torah, a settler rabbi, publishes the complete guide to killing Gentiles who threaten Israel, including children and babies. Are such calls harmless, or do they drive official policy and manipulate the masses? Uh, uh, actions that, that, that killed and injured women and children and men uh, uh, in their homes. Uh, political people may say whatever they want. The problem is not political but religious. <laughs> With a minute, people religious. are becoming religiously fanatic. Religion is becoming irrelevant. They do it for religious purpose, fanatic. The former Israeli general Nehemiah Dagan, who for many years was in charge of army education, says mixing religion with military can be a dangerous mix. A common theme in religious Zionism, where serving in the army is a form of religious duty. It says in the Torah that we have to go to the army. By publishing a new book in which he appears to authorize the killing of non-Jews who are accused of posing a threat to Israel. The book, called The King's Torah, contains quotations from the Talmud, a scholarly Jewish text, to which the rabbi adds his own opinions and interpretations. In a chapter entitled The Killing of Gentiles in Wartime, the rabbi writes, In any circumstances where the presence of a Gentile causes danger to Israel, it is permitted to kill the Gentile. In addition, he says, in cases where there is a strong suspicion that someone will continue persecuting Jews, it is permissible to kill him, even if at this moment he is not actively persecuting. Months after Israel's offensive in Gaza and the controversy continues, especially over the new role played by the army's rabbis. As seen here in a leaflet obtained by Breaking the Silence, distributed to combat soldiers in Gaza, which carry the logo of the military rabbinate. I will chase down my enemy and I will not return until he's destroyed and so on. That's, that's as religious biblical reference as you get. I don't care what the world thinks about what our land is or what our land is not. You don't we, care what the world thinks? No, no. Why? Because we are, we are a chosen nation and the world knows that. And, and God promised us Jerusalem. Jewish historian Tony Jutt wrote in 2006 on Israel's 58th birthday that the country was curiously immature and, quote, consumed by a brittle confidence in its own uniqueness, certain that no one understands it and everyone is against it, and full of wounded self-esteem, quick to take offence and quick to give it." End quote. Less than two hours after your families are evicted, the Israeli police help more than 20 Jewish settlers move into the now empty properties. And in this war, the Palestinians in Gaza have nothing. And Israel uh, is one of the strongest uh, states in the world. For example, instead of having a guard sitting on the wall with Gaza uh, that will shoot at any Palestinian that comes near to the wall, they have a special uh, something weird there that looks like, I don't know, coming from outer space, it's like a sphere. And there are a lot of surveillance cameras inside. And then there are women who sit in a base, an army base, inside Israel, far from there, who control these cameras, and when they see something moving, uh, they can shoot it from afar. So they have a room full of people who just control this entire section of the wall with Gaza. The system is called Ro'ayowa, which means seeing shooting in the feminine, because it's all women. 
and uh, it's it's quite uh, obscene if you think about it. But could, would you, could you tell me this then? To us as outsiders, the David and Goliath situation that exists between you and the and the Palestinians, particularly in Gaza, they don't happen. They don't appear to have an economy. They don't appear to have a society. They don't even appear to have a way of life. And now, in the last couple of months, 80, 90 percent of their, their homes are destroyed. They have no source of income. This, this is, I guess, why the world was shocked at the ferocity of, of your attack on Gaza.